Hi guys and welcome to Tech Tundra B. This video is going to be basically a time lapse and explanation of how to go through building one of the Annette A8 or Prusa i3 uh, 3 printers. I will be doing a full review on this next week so if you want to check out uh, how I printed all of these things, the uh, issues and the benefits of this printer then feel free to come back next uh, Wednesday 8pm British time and I'll have a full review up for you. Inside the box you get three layers of styrofoam packing which houses all of the parts you'll need. One of the things that you will have to do first First is uh, remove the packaging or the, the sort of paper that is on all of the acrylic pieces. This took three to four hours just on its own, so the overall uh, it's, you know, setup process took about six to eight hours total. I mean, I think I actually have three hours of footage, actually four hours of footage here, and I didn't cover uh, just removing the, the paper and stuff like that. I also had to do a bit of custom fabrication, including sanding the top corner piece that goes, uh, the one with the serial number on it, as that just straight up didn't fit, and I also had to do some custom drilling to actually drill out holes that they seem to just forget to do which were included in the instructions but and um, were very necessary and you know they included screws to be able to do it but they didn't include the holes in the rear piece so I had to drill those out to be able to install the rear motor that actually moves the print bed. A lot of the initial self-assembly is pretty simple overall, you're not going to be having too much of an issue. I would make sure that you measure the rod sizes, especially for the bottom and vertical pieces as there are actually two different lengths of rod you can use here uh, and when you're setting up the uh, sort of screws that attach everything, make sure it's all tightened down as hard as you possibly can and make sure that you align the front so that the covers that go over the more straight rods, that the ones that the bearings slide on, uh, so that they are nice and stiff and very stuck in otherwise I'd also make sure that you remove the plastic that goes onto the heated beds tray uh, and otherwise uh, when you are actually attaching the heated bed make sure that you level that out uh, I would also mention that you should use the side cutters that come in the packaging the blue ones so that you can cut this uh, cord because it's very difficult it's metal reinforced which is very nice but it is very difficult to actually get at When building the Z-axis motors, uh, I would mention that it's probably best to be able to sort of pre-build them and then attach them to the base like I have here. This seems like the easiest way to attach all of the pieces together and have them all sort of still fit. I'd also mention that you do need to move the collar on the motors up a little bit so that the Z-axis rails actually fit. And also I would mention that I recommend you pre-build and pre-attach the motor to the X-axis before then attaching the, the collar to the rail uh, and then installing the actual uh, sort of threaded rod that allows them to move up and down because uh, that does also seem a little bit easier. As again, when you are making the X-axis, uh, the, you know, the one that the extruder moves along, make sure that you use the side cutters to be able to actually cut the uh, sort of thread that whole, uh, moves the motor along. That is uh, a very difficult procedure and do make sure that you cut it almost identically or exactly to size so that it actually fits and can move from side to side completely freely. Setting up the control board is fairly easy, make sure that you do check out the instructions for exactly which header is which and I do recommend that you cable manage as you go here but I went for you know setting up and then cable managing it afterwards but it is nice that they include cable management sort of straps and coils and it does make it a little bit easier and a little bit nicer and obviously make sure that none of the wires are in the way and anything like that. I did actually cut off the head of a UK power supply, a uh, UK power cable as it didn't include one, it included uh, a EU or a US one which means that obviously that didn't work in the UK so I actually cut off the head and stripped the wires myself and then attached them to the power supply uh, for the, that purpose but otherwise uh, it is a fairly simple wiring job nothing too tricky. 
So that's the build process for this 3D printer. As I mentioned, I'll do a full review next week on this printer. So if you want to check that out, feel free to hit that subscribe button so you can be notified of the new videos. And of course, feel free to take a look at the link in the description down below to Gearbest who provided this printer uh, so that uh, you can check out the price when and where you watch this and all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of it really. If you want to check out some of the other videos, I'll leave them over here, the subscribe button, somewhere on the screen for you. Of course, if you do want to check out that printer review, feel free to hit the bell to be notified and uh, yeah otherwise thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video